All right, everyone, what's up? Welcome to another episode of That Hobby Show. Uh, if you were with us uh, during our regularly scheduled time, uh, we, we had some technical difficulties, but we are back, and uh, yeah, every everything's good to go now. Uh, so with me, as always, is Houston from Chasing the Graph. How's it going, man? Good, man. Good. Finally, I'm glad we got these kinks worked out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right? It's I've I've never had that happen before, uh, so that's that's kind of weird. So now I'm gonna have to go th back through YouTube and everything, and this will upload it and then delete the other uh, link. But the crappy thing is, the link that I sent out was for the previous show, so I don't I don't know if anybody's gonna be able to find this one uh, right away. But anyway, uh, so this week's topic is in person autographs. And with uh, everything that's going on, it looks like we might be able to get in-person autographs a lot sooner than expected. Uh, I, I know that's good news for you since you have uh, the sock puppets right there in your uh, pretty much your, your backyard. And they haven't released any of the names of the coaches, but the managers for that league, are uh, it, it's pretty stacked. Yeah, definitely, and I know um, uh, McDowell's obviously the uh, sock pupper, sock puppets uh, manager, and um, I, he's in the uh, ninety-one score set I'm working on. So it'd be kind of cool to to get one of those crossed off the list in person. Yeah, is now? Do you know if he's actually in town? As of yet, I don't know. I know he's done um, uh, three or four things with them. And I know he's did a couple of um, uh, segments with uh, MLB Network, but as far as I know, they've been through like a Zoom type situation. So I don't know if that was like at his at his apartment or at his house or in the office at the stadium somewhere. So I'm really not sure. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. So and then uh, hopefully that means MLB will lift their. Uh, I don't know if it's like a ban. Because I've seen a lot. Well, I wouldn't say a lot. Uh, there's usually MLB players, not a lot of them sign at the stadium. But I've seen some people have success. Uh, I've seen some folks having success at minor league games. And even with the news that came out yesterday with uh, you don't have to wear the mask anymore, uh, a lot of the minor league teams were taking down their – social distancing plastic. Uh, I, I know some teams had the first couple rows of seats blocked off, limited capacity, uh, the big plexiglass like kind of a, a bubble around the dugout so you can't get close. So hopefully uh, that gets lifted because uh, I that's the whole reason I haven't even tried to go to uh, any baseball games this year because, I mean, it's – like if you can't get close to the if you can't get close to the players, then you know what's the fun in that? Because even one of one of the rules MLB had was that players aren't even allowed to throw baseballs into the stands. You know that's pretty lame. So I think yeah. that's just Rob Manfred imposing more of his hatred for the game of baseball into baseball. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah if if you get rid of all your fans, then that's less people you have to make happy, less people that'll complain. So, I guess it's a way to make your job easier. Yeah, I guess that's his way of doing business. Yeah, yeah. So we'll see. But uh, yeah, if you're going to go out to a ballpark, uh, I would definitely check the team's website to see what rules are still in place. Because uh, I've been checking the teams around here, and per MLB guidelines, it, it says that uh, players aren't allowed to sign autographs. So, And then uh, half the guys, if they're wearing a mask, I don't know who the hell they are anyway to try and recognize them. So I need that mask mandate gone, you know, so I can go to El Paso and uh, get some autographs. But yeah, they, um, Just this past Friday here in North Carolina, and I know North Carolina, um, uh Roy Cooper had probably a reputation for being the one or more stricter states, and he lifted all the mask mandates, social distance poli social distancing policies, and everything for North Carolina, except for like on public transit, in a healthcare facility, or in a school. But as far as like a business or being outdoors, 
there's no more social distancing guidelines, there's no more mask mandates. And that's not to say that the actual, you know, like you were saying, the MLB can't come down and be like, your ballpark still has to do A, B, and C, regardless of what, you know, the the state or I, I don't know if it's on a federal level, but the state level said, but you still have to implement A, B, and C. So there's always that, just kind of like it's still up to, even though the state has lifted the the mandates, the, the businesses can still, if they so choose to continue people to wear masks in there. So um, I think it's a positive sign, maybe because it just seems like things are kind of moving in the right direction. So I'm hoping that's going to be a huge positive um, going forward, especially in the next month or two, once the short season start up. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So uh i'm sure you'll see attendance go up everywhere uh well it most likely will because uh, i'm sure they'll start increasing stadium capacities and stuff like that but uh anyway so our topic is in-person autographs how do you get your in-person autographs like are you are you the type of guy that just has just has a stack of cards or do you set up binders or what or, yeah, or the, get cards, you know, because I know uh, with the Carolina Panthers, you're more into uh, helmets and footballs and stuff. Yeah, I did. Um, I did cards a couple of times, but not um, for the Burlington Royals that are now the sock puppets. I threw like um, the Class A grass Greensboro Grasshoppers. I would just take um, pieces of paper and. Um, painters tape them to a, a, a blank page in a binder, like construction paper or something. And I would take the paper and put it on corners and basically tape the paper to the card in like two of the corners. And so mm -hmm. that way I can just pull the painters tape up and the papers over top of the card. So it won't you know, damage the card or anything like that. And then that way I can just hand them, you know, the binder with it open they can scribble on it and go on about their way instead of, me trying to hold a little single card while they're signing it or them trying to hold it or them yeah. being like, can I use your back or trying to put it <laughs> on your knee and sign it or something yeah. like that. And that's how I handle the cards, the individual like little cards, but like with the footballs and stuff behind me, that's, that's super simple. I always take three or four Sharpies or three or four paint pens because if there's a line, especially at the Panthers practices, if there's a line then they grab your marker, they're going to go down the line with your marker and sign three, four, five, ten autographs with it. You may get the marker back. You may not. I had uh, Luke Keekley take my paint pen and sign my picture with it, and then he started going down the line, and he was just signing stuff with that paint pen. It didn't matter what it was, and it was about 15 <laughs> people down, and then some guy's like, whose paint pen is this? And I was like, it's mine, and he's like, oh, okay, here you go. And then I've had some players, you know, just sign my ball and they hand me the Sharpie back. And then the next person, they'll sign it, hand them their Sharpie back. But yeah. I'd say probably at a Panthers practice, six out of ten times when they – if they – if your Sharpie or paint pen is the initial one that gets grabbed, it's going to be used for four or five people down the line. So with the football, it's a little bit easier. Just hold the football out there and make sure you got plenty of Sharpies. Yeah. Yeah, that's kind of the same thing at uh, baseball games. You want to have multiple Sharpies because uh, you'd be surprised how many kids go to a game without anything uh, to sign, you know, their item with. But I, I can't get too mad because, you know, it's like a seven or eight year old and they're like, oh, I want to go to the game and try and get autographs. Where's my Sharpie? You know, they're they're just going to grab a baseball or their hat or whatever, you know, and get whatever they can signed. Uh, me, I have, uh, I use books, uh, that, you know, they're just like that. Got the Raven sticker on there, but, uh, you can get them at Michael's for like, I always go when they're on sale. Cause these things are like 10, 15 bucks. And I try to get the, uh, the mixed media pages because mm -hmm. they, uh, they're a little bit, uh, thicker, right? They, mm -hmm. they're stockier. And then I, uh, I'll set it up. So like, this is how long it's been since I've been to spring training. I haven't taken these out of here. So I'll have it set up. So there's four cards on a page, uh, before 
I had bigger books where I put like eight cards uh, per player per page. And I stopped doing that. As I got older, you know, I got less selfish. I think it goes the other way around for some people. But uh, so that's what I do. And the, the way that they stick in there is I use photo corners. So they... You know, they, they just call them photo corners. I don't know if they make them like these anymore. And all they are, they're just uh, little little triangular stickers mm -hmm. uh, with a, like a little pocket that you can slide the cards in. But now I think they sell, yeah, they sell these. They're decorative photo corners, you know. And they come in different colors and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. uh, so what I'll do, I'll take a... Uh, like usually a checklist card and I'll put the two on there. Uh, I'll, I'll put one on the, usually the bottom left corner and then one on the bottom right corner. And then I'll use that card when I'm making the book. Uh, that way I'm not using the cards that I want to get signed because, uh, you know, I, I just don't want to damage them or anything, but yeah, no risk it. Yeah. Yeah. And then usually uh, when I go to slide the card in, the card won't slide in all by itself. So I'll get like, a piece of paper to slide in and then you put the card in behind it, you know? Uh, but yeah, that, that's what I do. And usually the book for me to set one up, I don't know how many pages this one is, uh, 50, it's, uh, it's 50 sheets and that'll probably take me about two hours. Yeah, yeah. definitely. So, uh, 50 sheets times four. So that'll be 200. And so one package of these will work because uh, it's 210 uh, of the photo corners. So that's what I do. And then do you, I, if you, oh, if you, on all your pages, if you have like different players, do you tab it somehow where you've got like Ichiro or Maguire and then you just flip to it as they're walking by or do you try to keep that, that book off of one I do player? It, I, alphabetical order. Uh, by last name, if so, if I am going to, if I'm going to spring training and seeing like the Padres, so the Padres share a facility with the Mariners, right? So, uh, I will usually have two books, one for the Padres, one for the Mariners. And it's, it's set up by, uh, alphabetical order by last name. And then that way I can just flip through it because if you, one, if you know their numbers, uh, if they change their number, if, if you do it that way, it'll get confusing. And then spring training, you'll see five dudes wearing number 11, you know, yeah. cause there's, you know, really 101 Jersey numbers that you could use including zero and double zero up to 99. Uh, so yeah, I'll do that. Or if once the Arizona fall league starts up, then what I'll do, some of the stadiums, they have a entrance to the field, the, the player's entrance to the field where they all come out in the same, uh, they use the same entrance, right? So then I will only have one book alphabetical order by last name because it's like, say what stadium uh, surprise is like that uh, where the Royals and the Rangers play their main stadium. They have two, two entrances that the players can use. They can use the traditional behind home plate. And then there's another one through the right field uh, outfield wall, right? But if I'm camped out be at home plate because that's where the visiting team will come in and they're going to they're going to veer off to the third base side, right? So that way if you uh, if you're behind home plate, you can try and get both teams. So I won't have enough time to be able to switch between books. You know, it'll be easier if I have one book in my hand and then I can just flip through the pages for them. So it, it really depends on the stadium setup and uh, like how many cards I have for the teams. Cause if I'm going to, 
if I'm going to a game and I can't even fill up a book with the one team, then I can probably make it work with uh, the the other team. And then I, if I can help it, I try not to put more than one player per page because I've had some guys, they get the tunnel vision and they sign everything. Like I've had a lot of dudes sign the wrong card. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And the, the, somebody, you know, may get their binder together and they're like, all right, I've got my binder. I've got my cards on here. You know, I've got my 42 Sharpies and 16 paint pens and, you know, ready to go, but just that little detail of, you know, organizing that binder so you can flip to it or that book, whatever you want to call it, so you can flip through it. Because if you're not ready and you don't have that card out, they're not going to stand there and wait for you to get their card out. They're going to walk away or they're just going to keep moving. So that matter of even probably like three to five seconds, you know, of them being kind of close to you and then just going past you is, is pretty critical yeah because uh i mean people think that taking or getting autographs takes some kind of skill you know it's like oh man how'd you get that dude's autograph honestly <laughs> it's being ready because there's been so many times where i've been the next in line for a player and the person in front of me is fumbling and he just skips them and goes to me you know uh, I remember one time in, it was in spring training at, uh, the Padres, they were on the backfields. It, this was a long time ago. This was when Richie Sexton, uh, was with the Mariners, huge dick. And, uh, they have everything, they have it roped off to where the, the players can walk down the, uh, like the middle of the walkway, but there's a rope on each side of them. You know, they, kind of like a bicycle lane for them where you can't cross the rope, you know? So everybody's lined up, just has their stuff out, you know, and he's just walking and I got lucky and he grabbed my stuff. Like he, I had a card in a Sharpie. Now he was walking, the dude's like six foot seven. So every step he takes is like five feet. Right. So he takes it. And he signs it, but he didn't stop. He was walking the whole time. So then I got to get out of the crowd and try and, you know, mm -hmm. chase him down to get my stuff back. But uh, a, a lot of times it's just being in the right spot at the right time. Uh, because uh, if you go to spring training a lot, you'll see a lot of guys have uh, habits. So learn their habits. Uh, they'll only sign at one spot in the complex or they never sign before practice. Right. So it's like, don't waste your time trying to get them because they won't sign right now. So try and get some other dudes, you know. Uh, and then another good thing about the book is so if you've ever gone to a lot of minor league games, right, uh, a, a really good time to get their autographs is after the game, not like when the game ends, but out in the parking lot. Right. So a lot of times, I'm not sure how it's set up in Burlington, but a lot of the places I went to where the visiting clubhouse bus parks is also where the home team, the home players uh, parking lot is at. So that way you can knock out both teams. But usually that's when you definitely want everything in one book because uh, it, it's chaos because the players are coming out and like they're they only have like 15 feet to walk to either the bus or their car and a lot of times they're trying not to be recognized so that's part of the fun you know like the cat and mouse game and uh so yeah if you're not ready you're not going to get their autographs i mean it's it's kind of easy to spot who the baseball players are because you know we've been in the stands for the past three hours and then here comes a dude that's dressed nice and he smells good so if somebody <laughs> smells good, if they smell like, you know, Old Spice or if they smell like cologne, that is a baseball player. So, <laughs> you know, you know, that's when you you like tell the little kids here like, hey, go get that guy's autograph. So they'll get out of the way and then you can get who you want. You know what I mean? So, yeah. In Burlington, it was I say it was, but it is set up for especially on the home side um, It's set up just absolutely autograph friendly because it's not 
some state of the art facility. It's not just grand, you know, facility. And the clubhouse is kind of on the back of the property. Okay. And it's fenced off. And so, but the fence is only like waist high, maybe like five feet high, maybe. And so they're coming out of the clubhouse. So you can just like hand your ball, book, hat, whatever over the fence and they can sign it. Or you could just wait for them to walk about 50 feet and come out of the gate. And then once they come out of the gate, they're on the concourse, just like everybody else in attendance. And they walk literally through the concourse past the beer stand to their, to their dugout to like the, the door where their dugout is. It's just once they get out of that gate where the clubhouse is and then over to the, the, uh, dugout door, it's just wide open space and they're just in the concourse with everybody else. That's so great. yeah, it's, it's super autograph friendly. There's no fencing keeping you from them. There's no security, I guess, if you will, the general manager's not over there, like holding people back or anything like that. And it is super autograph friendly. And I honestly, bef- I, the whole time they were the Royals, I was never, ever denied an autograph by a player. So I don't know if it's just because they're low or they're rookie level and they, you yeah. know, they have too big for their britches yet, but it's super, super, super autograph friendly stadium. Well, hopefully it stays that way because uh, I, I have a bunch of cards to send you. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, That the way you explain that, it, there's two stadiums that I've encountered like that. Uh, one is in Frederick, Maryland. Uh, it used to be – well, they're still the Frederick East, but they did not survive the Manfred snap. So they're, uh, they're going to be in the Prospect League. I don't think it's the same league as what Burlington is. But anyway, so the field is like – the field is sunken in, right? And then – well, it's kind of weird. It's like it's built on the side of a hill, like – so the outfield is at ground level. Well, where the parking lot is. Yeah, it's kind of, it's really weird when I when I try to explain it to you because <laughs> you have uh you walk in through the main concourse, right? And then the field you go down. So that's sunken in, right? But everything else is level with the main concourse and on the left field and right field uh the side connected to the concession stands is the home and away dug or uh, the home and away clubhouse. So for them to get out, they have to, there's only one way to get out and they have to go through, they have to walk across the concourse about 15, 20 feet. Right. And then they got to go down the hill. It's like 30, 40 steps to get to their dugout. And then, uh, one of the other uh, stadiums I've seen that was built like that is uh, in Colorado Springs. The uh, Now they're called the Rocky Mountain Vibe. And the visiting uh, clubhouse is exactly the same setup. And it blew my mind because this was AAA. Now, the Keys, when they were affiliated, they were uh, advanced A. and uh, But that's not something you would expect with AAA. And I know uh, – it was awesome when I was there because Fresno Grizzlies were playing and that's when uh, they were still the Houston Astros and Carlos Correa was there um, before he made the majors. So I, I love a place where you can get in front of the player. They can tell you no, but yeah. they have to go around you. Yeah, so. the, uh, the the Grasshopper Stadium, It's they've got um, one – uh, tunnel that all the players come out of and go to their dugouts. Yeah. And before the game, it's actually like you're actually, depending on where you're at, there's only like three places you can be where the players can actually reach up and grab your book or your ball or anything like that. Mm-hmm. And then there's little uh, doors that go from the the stands to the fields and the door is connected to the dugout, kind of. There's just no, like, little door there. It's just a little bit of fence. Yeah. So you've got those on each side. But other than those three spots, everything else around the field is net. 
and you can't get a ball through it. You can't get a book or anything like that. So unless you're in like an absolute prime position and you can beat a couple of people to those spots, you're just not, it's just not going to happen. Mm. Yeah. Unfortunately, a lot of uh, stadiums are getting that way. And I remember uh, back in the day when they said they were, you know, the stadiums were going to these safety nets. Uh, a lot of teams said that they would they would be like curtains. Yeah. Before the game started, they would be slid all the way to the side, so you still had access to the players, and that has not happened yet, uh, which is kind of disappointing. And I was worried that was uh, going to happen with uh, all the COVID protocols this year, because like I was saying, a lot of teams had that plexiglass and everything up, and they uh, like barricaded uh, the players' parking lots and stuff like that, and it it was concerning because these temporary measures were looking awfully permanent. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, you know, teams teams have started taking them down. I'm in a a minor league autograph uh, group on Facebook, and there's people fighting every day about it, and. Uh, you know, always posting pictures like, Hey, look at all these autographs I got. And there, you know, people be yelling at them. Oh, you're not supposed to ask for autographs, you know, whatever. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. That, there's been a lot of that, a lot of that. Yeah. But it, it's, it's good though, that uh, this stuff is coming down and hopefully, you know, you're able to uh, rack in Burlington. Uh, yeah, Cause I know it's going to be um, uh, freshmen and sophomores in this collegiate collegiate wood bat league we got here so oh, for real yeah yeah they uh announced that i guess like a week ago that it's going to be all freshmen and sophomores so it's going to be kind of interesting to see the talent that that comes yeah because uh none of those guys are draft eligible you're not draft eligible until you're a junior so well yeah. that's you know that you guys at least got some information because the uh prospect league uh where my parents live the Frederick Keys, they they haven't even sent out their tickets yet uh, to season ticket holders, and I think the season starts in I think it starts at the end of this month. So a lot of people are pissed off already. And uh, like I said before, they've only announced the managers. Um, I think there's four teams in this league, and uh, four or six, I can't remember. And yeah, they. Like you would not know that they're getting ready for a baseball season. This has been an absolute uh, cluster F for people that, you know, are trying to make plans because there's not a lot of people that say, Hey, let's go to a ball game tonight. You know, people plan shit. So they, they want to know in advance and I don't even know if, uh, the schedule's out or not, but yeah. So when you, uh, when you're getting your stuff signed, uh, as far as cards go, do you prep your cards at all? I do, but I don't. If it's like a regular, just like a, a base card paper card, card yeah. I'm not going to do anything with it. But if it – and I don't even do chromes or anything like that because it takes more than just hitting it with that little dry eraser. It takes more than that. So, yeah, yeah. But if, if it is um, something that does have like a little bit of shine to it or something like that, like the contenders are kind of – kind of a little bit of shine, kind of a little bit of paper kind of thing. I might prep those a little bit, but other than that, uh, most of my base cards I don't really mess or do any. I really don't mess with. Yeah, I use the uh, the old plastic eraser, the the white eraser. Uh, yeah, anything that has gloss to it. But uh, Sorry, I lost my train of thought. There, There's also some people that say you can use baby powder. Uh, uh -huh. I tried using baby powder before. Word to the wise, uh, check the ingredients of the baby powder. Because I thought, oh, it's baby powder. It's all going to be super soft, right? No, not all baby powder has, is uh, made the same, uh, apparently. Because I had a uh, – it was a Bowman Sterling card, right? And my me being the dummy, uh, it was a card that I wanted to get signed. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to try baby powder. 
get a test card first of a card in the same set that maybe you have three, four, five, six cards up, right? That you don't care if it gets destroyed. Cause so I took a little bit of baby powder and I rubbed it on the card and it was like, I was rubbing sand on it, dude. Like it, like you, it, it looked like one of those uh, top loaders that you see people put on Facebook marketplace. Like <laughs> it was scratched all to hell. And I was like, what is going on with this baby powder? So after that day, I, uh, I stopped using baby powder. I know some people like it, but I don't know the ratio of powder per card or do you put a little <laughs> in your finger and rub it in and then rub it off. So I, me, I just use the plastic eraser, go, uh, go over the cards uh, smooth or not smooth, but uh, lightly. Cause sometimes, you know, when you're really getting into it, like it'll catch the card and, bend in your hands type thing. So uh, I've had that happen to me a few times uh, and it's always on a card that I'm, you know, really trying uh, that I really want to get signed. I think, I think it happens because since I really want that card to, you know, signed that I'm, I'm putting that extra attention to it. But uh, KBO collection is watching. Uh, thanks for watching George. And uh, he's actually going to start doing TTM in Korea. Uh, and he is not making the same mistake as I am because <laughs> he's not Korean stamps and he's going to send it to people in Korea. Uh, luckily though, uh, a couple of my Twitter friends hooked me up with some Japanese stamps. So I've exhausted all my Japanese stamps, but uh, I have the correct postage. Uh, I did the conversion uh, because Japan uses grams and not ounces. So, you know, the, how many grams are in an ounce, all that stuff. Yeah. Uh, so I, I made sure all the packages had the correct uh, postage on it. And like he said, though, uh, Koreans sign everything in black. Uh, the, the guys in the KBO, uh, I think when, when I was living in Korea, some of the younger kids, like they started getting their stuff signed in blue. And then they also, uh, you know, I they made books. So it, it was pretty cool to see him do that, you know, uh, because I would hook him up with photo corners and everything because there really wasn't a huge uh, – there's a huge autograph culture but not autograph collecting, if that makes any sense, because there will be people that have uh, their cell phone cases, just getting their cell phone cases – signed by the players and then uh like they would get cheap cell phone cases and uh get it signed by the player pop it off put another one on like craziest stuff i've ever seen and uh but yeah they would just get the most random stuff signed uh but uh so what what what's your go-to pins um i actually have one right here for like a baseball this right yeah. here, I don't know if you can see it or not. Uh -huh. It's just like a zoom out, zoom out, zoom out. Round stick bit, big. I mean, okay, yeah. Round stick, round stick M, and it's it's blue, and I've yet to have any problems with it on a non-China baseball. Yeah, and, um, I should have brought I'm... my ink pen that I use. There, I forget what they are. They're a gel one, and uh, I always take it with me. And Eddie Murray tried to take it from me. It was awesome. Um, You're like, no. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, Eddie, I need that back. I was like, this, this, this ink pen writes good. So here, use this. And he's like, all right. <laughs> and he did it. He's like, You're right. That does write good. And I'm like, Hey, Eddie, can I get that back? Because he's putting it in his pocket. <laughs> I'm like, Come on, man. Because it, it's, uh, it's one of those ink pens where you can't buy the the box of them you have to buy the one that comes with the red the green the purple and i'm like i just want the blue and i yeah. can see people just are jerks and they open up the packs and seal that one pin because i don't want to pay 13 dollars. you know what i'm saying but uh george uh so he's in korea he's seen uh someone sign a banana and i believe it like yeah they just get it's kind of one of those things when you see somebody signing autographs and you don't want to miss out. You're like, shit, I got to get something signed. Here's my <laughs> FOMO. Yeah. FOMO. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, but yeah. When it, comes to, when it comes to silver, I will, I don't use a silver Sharpie for anything. It's always paint pen for silver. Yeah. I use this bad boy. So, 
No, this is an Edding 750. This thing is from Germany. Ooh. Yeah, it's like a ten dollar <laughs> a ten dollar paint marker. I do not let this thing out of my sight. So uh, I found out about these in Korea. My one of my buddies, uh, he was helping me out because I was like, "Hey, where can I go and find like art books?" You know. So he took me. Uh, we got on the train and found this store in a subway uh, because everything is like underground. So. Yeah. And uh, George will probably be able to help me out with it. It was called like Hot Tracks or something like that. The first name was Hot and then I think it was Tracks, not Topic or anything like that. It it had like the name you would think of a record store, right? But it was actually an art store. And they had this there uh, because I had a jersey that I wanted to get signed. And... Uh, so I was trying to find a, a paint marker because I love paint markers, right? For I, I don't know. I just think they look really, really good. And uh, that's the one I got. And then I ended up using it all. And uh, the only place I've been able to find these damn things now, other than people in Korea, is on Amazon. But they're like 10 bucks a piece and they get shipped from Sweden or something. So usually I buy like three or four at a time. Yeah, so yeah, that way you don't run out. <laughs> yeah, I was right. It was Hot Tracks and Art Box. I've been to Art Box as well. So that's a good place in Korea to get stuff. Uh, and then for like only for cardboard cards and with a dark, uh, with like a dark background, I will use the Sharpie paint marker, right? Uh, because everything else I use, I, I use a blue Sharpie, you know, if yep. you want, you can get, uh, I think there's like a 25 different colors of these, but I use the, uh, just the regular blue and, uh, they, they cost like five bucks a piece at Michael's or whatever. I always wait till I have a coupon. Mm. I'm cheap. Yeah, definitely. The only bad thing about using paint markers and you probably know this is like when you get something signed in Sharpie. You can give it a couple seconds and then you can put it in your stack of cards, right? And it's good. These, you have to wait. So yeah. Oh, yeah. if you're trying to get multiple uh, guys' autographs in a short amount of time, I would not recommend using paint pens because uh, it's actually like putting a layer of paint down on your item. And if you don't give it minutes to dry – uh, your autograph is going to get destroyed. And the bad thing with those is usually it's not salvageable, uh, that item, unless a, a football I could see maybe getting it cleaned off, mini helmet possibly, but a card is – it's pretty it's much – card or picture is not, it's not going to happen. Yeah, and yeah. If you're going to try and take probably, it off the picture, you're going to take the gloss off too. Yeah, and another – um, it's only happened to me once, but I've heard, you know, or seen where it happens is, uh, with a paint pen, you have to worry about the player potentially pushing down on it too hard. And then it like blots out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, it'll look like a, uh, like a blood splatter from like CSI yep. Miami or something. Right. Uh, yep. I've had that. And then I've also had it where I took the cap off and it's just like, Ugh, like it, it just <laughs> all over the place, and I'm like, "Are you kidding me?" And I have a blue hand and paint everywhere. Yeah. So uh, you definitely, though, with uh, the paint markers, you know, you need to shake them, uh, push push the tip in a couple times, to get the ink or uh, to get the paint flowing, and then have something to uh, test, to test it. it on. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you need something. That's why you've seen on the the front of my book here. You know, I test, you know, so I got to make sure that everything, uh, cause I, I'm really, uh, anal about my autograph. So I, I try to make sure yeah. that, you know, it's good if to it go becomes, ready. If it becomes a bad autograph, it's not going to be on you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that's another thing is like when you're talking about bad autographs, another reason why I like the book, uh, you don't have to worry about thumbprints. You know, exactly. When they're handing the card back to you, because uh, I have a lot of those where it's thumbprints, and uh, 
The only thing you have to worry about with the book is if the guys, so say I have four cards, right? Like I had, or this one, I have three cards. If they start at the bottom signing and then they go up here, you got to worry about them putting their hand on it, right? Mm -hmm. So, but usually that only happens with lefties, but usually yeah. those guys, uh, usually the lefties are really good about navigating around books. Yeah. But uh, my, this is my number one rule to getting in-person autographs for anybody watching that has done it, wants to do it, may think about doing it for the love of God. Please call the player by their right name. Please know who you're calling and talking to. It has cost other people. It's happened three times at the Panthers practice. Tight end Ed Dixon was walking by. The guy to the right of me by like three people as he's walking up, hands a football and a Sharpie out and says, hey, Mr. Funches, Devin Funches, wide receiver, will you <laughs> sign for me? Ed Dixon, the thoughts turns around and was like, man, why are you out here trying to get autographs and you don't even know who you're trying to get? And then, like, the next, like, eight players that were around and heard that conversation, they just, like, people were like, oh, Mr. Dixon, will you sign for me? Or, oh, Star Latulale, will you sign for me? And they all just kept walking. So I'm just, like, looking at this dude, like, me and you are going to meet in the parking lot after this. It's not going to end well with you. But, yes, for the love of God, please know the name of the player you're calling and just just know their name. That's all you got to do is just know their name because you might ruin it for other people too. I'm guilty of that. <laughs> I'm guilty of that. Uh, <laughs> the last time I went to the Arizona Fall League, uh, this was a couple years ago, there was Drew Jackson and Alex Jackson, both on the same team, both of them decided to grow their hair out long, and yeah, I got uh, I called uh, Drew, and it was Alex that actually came over, and I had Drew stuff out, and it sucks because uh, yeah. Alex Jackson he's playing for the Braves right now, not that good, huge asshole, and he does not sign, and that was the day he actually came over. He's the, he's the type of guy that'll sign your autograph right on the card, and then he'll set the Sharpie directly on top of the card. Like, come on. Dude. You know? Yeah. So, but it, it happens uh, at least once a year. I'll call someone by their wrong name. I'm, yeah. Because you know, I'm like, there's a guy that I want, nobody's saying his name, and then I'm like, screw it. I'm just going to do it. I'm, I'm going to say it, you know, and try to get them to come over. And usually half the time it's the wrong guy, you know. <laughs> yeah. all, all the white dudes look alike, so I can't tell them apart, you know. Yeah, I was about to say, there's because there's a, there's a big difference between a guy wearing number 84 that's like 6'4 versus a guy number wearing 17 that's like maybe six foot, you know what I'm saying? It's like – and – the Panthers, they have their, like, last name on the back of their practice jerseys, too. So, it's like, you have to actively, like, not know what you're doing. And the way they walk up from the stadium to the practice field, you could literally be at the bottom of this hill right where their stadium is, and they'll walk past you, and then you could be like, oh, there's Ed Dixon, Devin Funches, and Christian McCaffrey, and then scurry your way up the hill and be like, Oh, hey, Ed Dixon, how are you today? Would you sign this football for me? And it's just like, it's a good probably three to 400 feet from where you can stand at to get autographs from where they walk into the practice field at. So you have to actively like try pretty hard to mess it up at a Panthers practice. Mm, nice, nice. But uh, yeah, so I, I think we've covered the ins and outs of in-person autographs pretty good. Uh, we, I think we recovered nicely from our audio hiccup, but, uh, so next week we have Jeff Lyman coming back on the show, uh, next Wednesday, Wednesday in America, George, if you're watching, it'll be Thursday, uh, in Korea. So Jeff Lyman, uh, former Atlanta brave second round draft pick. He also played in the, uh, A's and Cardinals organizations. So, 
what I'm trying to do is instead of having one like hour and a half long interview where people aren't going to watch all of it and they're going to uh, tune out, uh, I, I'm going to try and have him come on monthly and do like maybe 15, 15 minutes to a half an hour and just, you know, tell us about one topic of life in the minor leagues. So this week, uh, Wednesday, 3.30 Eastern, I'm sorry, 3.30 Pacific, 6.30 Eastern. Uh, Jeff Lyman will come back on. And the topic I chose for this week is uh, travel in minor league baseball because I there's got to be super interesting uh, – some interesting stories about travel because these dudes don't fly on airplanes. And Jeff will be able to explain this, but I don't think – Minor leaguers start flying on airplanes until double A, and it has to be over a certain mileage. Yeah. And then I think it's more regular in triple A that they use uh, aircraft to travel. But un until then, it's uh, up to a 14 hour bus ride. You know, yep. uh, so there's definitely got to be some good stories about, you know, like unwritten rules on the bus. Hey, number one <laughs> type thing uh, or dudes that have a bad game still pissed off about each other. And now you're uh, on a bus for 14 hours with this dude that just booted the ball that cost you the game type thing. So I'm definitely uh, interested to uh, hear that. And if anybody has any topics about uh minor league baseball that they want Jeff to talk about, hit me up on Twitter. Charm city graphs at Charm city graphs. I'm not as good as you at that. And, uh, yeah. And, and we'll, uh, I'll, I'll start jotting some stuff down, uh, because he's, he's super into actually coming on our show. So that, that's pretty awesome that we have. We must not have, we must not have uh, scared him too bad on the, on the first one that he's willing to yeah, go back. I mean, he, yeah, he seemed like he had a really good time. Uh, I was word vomiting, so I couldn't stop talking. Uh, but, yeah, I learned a lot. I'm going to have to actually go back and watch that interview again and then go on YouTube and actually put timestamps so people can see what we talked about uh, because there was a lot of – there was a lot of good information, uh, a lot of shit that I learned, and I, I think it would uh, it, it would be more interesting if uh, people could see, you know, skip to what they, you know, definitely, definitely, day in the life. Yeah, yeah. So, but uh, what do you have going on in uh, the Twitter and Facebook world that you need to plug? So. I haven't announced it yet. I did a huge interview myself. Yes, or was it? I think it was Thursday. Yeah, it was Thursday. Um, so I'm about to drop the name right now. I haven't dropped it yet. But for what anybody, about, what about on Did you announce it on there? No, I haven't. I mean, people on there already know, but I've got one subscriber. So what? What, what have I got to lose? <laughs> but I did an interview the other day. It's going to be uploaded. This Tuesday at 7 p.m. with Mike Goldberg, former UFC commentator. He's commentated every sport you can think of, hockey, basketball, college basketball. Mm -hmm. He was a UFC commentator beside Joe Rogan for, oh, God, eight eight years, nine years. And he's with Bellator now as yeah. a uh, – He was with them up until they went to uh, ESPN, right? Yep. Yep. Yeah, when it was yep. on like what, Spike TV and stuff. Yeah, yeah, and he, I, the man had so many catchphrases at the beginning of the fight. He'd be like, "And here we go," or yeah. they get knocked out, and he'd be like, "It is all over." And so I was a huge fan of his, huge UFC fan. Um, so it was a, a honor and a pleasure to talk to him. Super fantastic guy. We chatted for about 10, 15 minutes before the interview started. But I, that's going to be on YouTube. This Tuesday at 7 p.m. for the premiere. So everybody, please check that out. It's so much fun. Awesome. Yeah, that'll be a good one. Uh, 
that's one of the guys that you know haven't hasn't been making like the rounds on the podcast and stuff like that. So that's something new. Uh, that's something that <laughs> extremely <laughs> difficult is to find a guest that hasn't been uh, sucked dry yet. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so yeah, yeah. He told me he said um, he said I got your message and he told my wife he was like I, he's like so many people did this for me when I was you know up and coming and you know, trying to get in the sports and entertainment world. And he's like, so he's like, I've got to do it. And he was, he was happy to do it. It was, he was so cool about it. He was genuine. And you can tell when you're interviewing somebody and they're doing it just because they're like, Oh, if I don't do it, this guy's going to go on social media and blast me as an asshole. So yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. He was not like that at all. He gave several stories and he was super, uh, like talking to him in a good way. He wasn't just yeah. answering the question. He was, he was giving back stories. So it's a lot of fun. It's about 35 minutes long and there's a lot of good stories in there. And he gives some, some hints on some, some bare knuckle stuff and uh, a fighter that hasn't fought in a while that's going to be fighting in Mexico. So there's some gold nuggets in there to, to look for. Awesome. Uh, any stack sales? Nah, not coming up. I, kind of running out of supply so i might have to halt the sales <laughs> for a little while yeah i understand uh but awesome so you can check us out our twitter handles are below uh there we go yeah yeah and, <laughs> and uh, pretty much charm city autographs on facebook charm city autographs on youtube uh chasing the graph the ocho on instagram uh, chasing the graph on Facebook, chasing the graph on YouTube. And so we will see everyone Wednesday, uh, for another, uh, special show with Jeff Lyman. So thank you everyone for tuning in and we will see you then.